Yep. So okay. when there is the conception of the divine is so different, can there be harmony? Well, let's try to understand more clearly what causes disharmony. So there is there are two distinct concepts over here. There is exclusivism, and there is extremism. And the two are not the same thing. Ex exclusivism is more in terms of conceptions. It is, oh, okay. It is our conception of the divine that is the only right conception. Uh, that, so, exclusivism is in terms of beliefs. And extremism is in terms of actions. If you look at it over here, extre ex extremism is where one becomes intolerant, one becomes fanatical, one becomes violent towards others. So yes, it is, there is a slippery slope by which one can slide from exclusivism towards extremism. But it is not necessary. If it were that exclusivism intrinsically leads to extremism, then there will be constant violence. There is, of course, violence in the history of the world. But it's not that there is constant violence. Because what happens is, people's actions are not determined solely by their, by their ideological beliefs alone, even by their religious beliefs alone. So, for example, if you consider from the left's perspective, there's communism. And communism is quite exclusivist in the idea that all of human history has just been class struggle. And the only solution is that we have to eliminate all classes, only then there will be harmony. But then there is a milder version of communism that has come, that is socialism, which says, okay, we also want to remove class, but we will do it through democracy. And there is, there is a spectrum. So the Bhagavad Gita does not talk about religions like Hinduism in terms of Hinduism, Christianity, Islam. It talks about human beings in terms of their psychological profiles, in terms of their psychological and behavioral characteristics. And it talks about three modes, three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. Goodness, passion, and ignorance. So what that means is that within every tradition, there will be people in sattva, Sattva are people who are thoughtful. They think and then they act carefully. There are people who in Rajas, they are a little bit more impulsive. If something is desirable, they act and they think later. And in Tamas, in the mode of ignorance, people get obsessed with one thing alone and then they forget everything else. That one thing becomes their solitary obsession. So if I talk about it over here, so, in terms of religious conceptions in sattva, there is focus on commonality while there is acknowledgement of difference. So, those in sattva, yes, we have many common things. Like, even in an Abrahamic tradition, if somebody is, that, that it's not that everybody is in a, one particular mode. It's not the same true that in, in the Vedic tradition also. Different people are in different modes. So, in sattva, if somebody is in sattva, they will acknowledge, yes, my, my theology is different from yours. But still, there is commonality. We are striving for some higher meaning and purpose in life. We are striving for, to look for something enduring. So there will be focus on commonality while acknowledgement of difference. In Rajas, there will be focus on difference while there may be some acknowledgement of commonality. Hmm. Uh, so, so, there, so in Rajas, in the mode of passion, there is a greater possibility of conflict. In Tamas, there is only obsession on one thing, one characteristic which is made the ultimate thing. To make one thing into everything. So yes, according to my theology, this is right and you are wrong. So, so this is where it is in Tamas that extremism comes up. So there may be people who may be having exclusivist beliefs. But if they are in Sattva, if they are in Rajas, they will not degenerate towards extremism. But what happens is, uh, if we consider, so what is the cause of extremism? What is the cause of violence? Some people say that they will try to 
I say that there is no religious cause at all. It's only socio, socio, political, economic, geopolitical, historical causes. This is why people in this area are becoming violent. So, for example, if you consider the Kashmir Files movie, they tried to at least the way they uh, the history that was untold was told over there. How the uh, brutal depravities of the terrorists was whitewashed. No, it is all because the Indian state was so oppressive. What could they do except raise a weapon? Well, okay. Well, the the Muslim extremists were so violent toward the Kashmiri Hindus, but they didn't raise weapons. So to say that that is the only cause and there's no theological cause for it, that is one extreme. But the other extreme is to say there's only theological, that the, the, it's only because they are Muslims, they became terrorists. So Muslims become terrorists. No, there is Islam, which is very big, in which there are people in Satwa, Rajas and Tamas. And there is Islamic extremism, where there are people who are prominently in Tamas, prominently in the mode of ignorance, who are in power. So when there is violence, there is extremism, there is a complex bend of theological and non-theological causes. Theological cause is a part of it. To say that it is not a part of it is to ignore reality, to deny reality, to, to be, have put blinders on. But to say that the theological cause is the only cause is also to put a blind on. Because then why isn't everybody acting like that? If that so exclusivism doesn't lead to extremism always. It leads when there is tamas. So let's put it another way. What happens is we shouldn't rush to judgment. So it will. When will exclusivism lead to extremism? You can look in terms of the diagram. What happens is, if there are followers in tamas and there are leaders in tamas, that means the followers obsess. Oh, you know, according to our theological. Now that is also one reading of the theology, one understanding of the theology. There are Christians also who are quite inclusive. There are Christians who differentiate between Jesus and Christ. They say Jesus is a particular manifestation of Christ, who is the ultimate deity. And Christ manifests in different ways. So if the followers are in tamas and the leaders are in tamas, then that is most disastrous. That is where that is where hell can hell can un, un, unfold on the earth. Now, if the followers are in tamas, but the leaders are not in tamas, the leaders are mature, they will at least sooner or later bring the followers under control. If the so that is bad, at least followers are in tamas. But if the leaders are in tamas and the followers are not in tamas, then that's still worse because the leaders will incite people. And that will, that, that will also, some pe people will get indoctrinated, people will get uh, radicalized. And the best is where neither are in tamas. Now that is not humanly possible. However, if a, if a significant number of the leaders are in sattva or rajas, preferably in sattva, and a significant number of people, even followers are in sattva or rajas, not tamas, then that is, that is good. And that can happen in various ways. One is, of course, there has to be, wherever there is extremism, there has to be a proportionate response. That means uh, we cannot put on kid gloves when dealing with extremism. There has to be strong uh, response to control that. But at the same time, the solution will be that we could say those people who are in sattva, even in a religion which has exclusivism as a theology, there will be people in sattva and they will broadly be the moderates. So if to counter extremism, we cannot if we presume that everyone in a particular group is extremist, well, that is, that is a rush to judgment. It is not true that everyone will be in Tamas and be an extremist. But to say that, oh, the extremists are a tiny fringe, well, maybe, maybe not. In some places, they may be a tiny fringe, but in some places, they may not be. They may be, the, they may be a influential minority, a vocal minority, aggressive minority sometimes. And some places, they may be actually the majority also. So we have to look, we have to analyze according to time, place, circumstance, according to situation and act appropriately. So to, if you want to counter extremism, what we ultimately needed is, we need to, if we, uh, if we want tolerance, 
we need to focus on if you somebody only interacts with the moderates and they say that oh you know uh, you people why are you so why are you so oh, so so ex uh, so judgmental no there are there are good people there also so it's ironical that what happens is people who interact with those who are sattva and with moderates and they say don't be judgmental don't be judgmental like there is this whole uh, phenomena of the fear of islam of islamophobia and yes you don't want uh, aversion or negativity towards any particular community at the same time the point is that there are there have been extremist actions and that's why there is fear so we don't want smoke the point is not don't condemn everyone who is calling out smoke 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 extinguish the fire the smoke will also go away and then nobody will and then you can really find out people who are who are bent on being alarmist and calling out smoke when there is no smoke and when there is no fire so the idea is yes there can be islamophobia but that is also because there is islamic extremism so deal with extremism and the islamophobia will substantially decrease so those who say that don't be judgmental now quite often these people are extremely judgmental towards those who are judgmental hmm? they say you are condemned how can you be so judgmental so we can't see only the moderates and say the extremists are not there and we can't only reduce our community to extremists what we need to do is this moderates need to be empowered and the extremists need to be disempowered so when that is done when the moderates are empowered that means we aid in the rising of sattva in various communities or at least the curbing of tamas so when that uh, mentality of obsessing over one thing is decreased then it is definitely possible that there can be harmony but then there will not be paradise it's not that there will be utopia but certainly the levels of disharmony can be substantially decreased